Hey guys, so welcome to unit 5.7. This is the last section in unit 5. And we're going to build on what we did last time and talk about uh, linear functions. So we'll be discussing a bit more of rate of change and how to interpret linear functions. So uh, any graph of a line that is not blank represents a function. And we've been talking about this for the last couple lessons. So uh, any linear line that is not vertical, and when I say vertical, I'm talking about this right here, so a line that's directly up and down, represents a function. So, any graph that is not vertical represents a function. And at this point, you guys should be getting pretty good at identifying uh, functions versus non-functions. So, uh, these two here are definitely functions. Another way of saying that is that each element in the domain is associated with only one element in the range, uh, and clearly this one's not. And like we talked about in the last lesson, we can do the ruler test. And if there's any points that are aligned on the vertical line, then it's not a function. <clears throat> uh, so let's go through this example first. So now we're talking about the height of a float plane. And if you look at this graph, we can see that our range here, or our vertical axis, has height. And our domain down here, or horizontal axis, has time. So we have time as the independent variable and height as the dependent variable. And looking at this graph, we can see that as time increases, the height decreases, all the way to the point where the height is zero. So we can assume that this is a flow plane that is currently on its way down. So this is a flow plane that's landing. Uh, now, let's look at this first question. It asks, where does the graph intersect the vertical axis? And what does this point represent? So uh, this is our vertical axis here. So we're talking about the height, and if we follow this line up on the graph, we see that it hits the vertical axis right here at 1,000 meters. So it's 1,000 meters. And then it asks, what does this point represent? Well, if we think about it, at 1,000 meters, the time is zero. So uh, this point represents the height at the point where we start the graph, where we start our data, so at time zero. Uh, and they call this uh, the intersect of the vertical axis. We're going to call this the vertical intersect. Uh, and later on, we'll be calling this the y-intercept. Because in graphing, this is always going to be our y axis and this is going to be our x axis. All right, so the next one asks, where does the graph intersect the horizontal axis? So this axis right here. And what does this point represent? So uh, if we follow the line down, we notice that it hits the horizontal axis right here at T10. So uh, we hit the horizontal axis at 10 minutes. And what does this point represent? This point represents uh, the time at which the plane reaches a height of zero. So uh, the point at which the line hits the horizontal axis is the point at which the height is zero. So here we call this the vertical intercept because we were talking about where it intersects on the vertical axis. So down here we're going to call this the horizontal intercept. And a little later on, we're going to be referring to this as the y-intercept, as the x-intercept, sorry. Okay, so now let's do a bit of review of what we did in the last class. So we're going to talk about rate of change of this graph. Now, remember, rate of change, I'll just say r of c, is equal to the change in the dependent variable over the change in the independent variable. So the change in the dependent variable over the change in the independent variable. And when looking at this graph, uh, when we want to talk about changes in dependent or independent variable, we have to choose two points to work with. Uh, and we can really choose any two points as long as we use those same two points when looking at the change of both the dependent and independent variable. So uh, let's choose 
Uh, just randomly, let's choose this point and this point. So we're going to be looking for the change in the dependent variable, which is the height. And that will be this right here. And then we're going to be looking for the change in the independent variable, which is going to be this right here. So here, this change in the dependent variable is from 800 meters to 700 meters. So there's a 100 meter change. However, we're not increasing in height, we're decreasing. So because the height is decreasing, we call that a negative change. So this is gonna be a change of negative 100. And in fact, while we're on the topic, when we're talking about rates of change, we can have a negative or positive rate of change. And positive rates of change are any lines that are going to the right and up. So any lines where we are going to the right and up, these are going to be positive rates of change. So in this case, as cost is increasing, time is increasing. In this case, as time increases, the volume here in liters is decreasing. So if you see a graph where the line is going to the right and down, that's going to be a negative rate of change. And in this final case, whenever you see a line that's absolutely horizontal, that means that the range or the dependent variable isn't changing at all. That's going to be a rate of change of zero. And we'll discuss this a little more in a later slide. So uh, here for the dependent variable, we have, a, we have a change of negative 100 meters between this point and this point while we have a change in the independent variable of, so here we have two minutes, and here we have three minutes, so that's a change of one minute. Now, back to rate of change, so rate of change is the change in the dependent variable over the change in the independent variable. Well, my dependent variable changed by negative 100 meters. My independent variable changed by one minute. And typically when calculating rate of change at this point, I would do this division, but because this is already over one, I don't have to. So my rate of change is in fact negative 100 meters per minute. And notice this is a negative rate of change, which means that our dependent variable is decreasing. And that makes sense because our graph is going to the right and down. So that would be this case. All right, so pause the video here. I want you to try this one on your own, and then when you come back, we'll, we'll go over the answers. Okay, so uh, this graph is looking at the height of a burning candle. Uh, the first thing you're asking us is to determine the vertical and horizontal intercepts. Well, our vertical intercept is right here. It's at height of, this is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So a height of 10 centimeters, and it's at a time zero, so time of zero minutes. So this is our vertical, vertical intercept. Uh, now for our horizontal intercept, uh, so that's going to be the point at which the graph hits the horizontal line, or uh, the x-axis here, and here we have at time 10, 20, 30, 40, this is going to be 45. So it's going to be at t is equal to 45 minutes, and that's a point where height is equal to 0 centimeters. So we're definitely seeing a trend here. At intercepts, there always seems to be one variable that is 0, and we'll definitely build on that. So this is this is the horizontal intercept. And then describe what the points of intercept represent. We kind of already did that. Uh, the vertical intercept represents a point where uh, the height is 10 at time zero. So at the very beginning of burning the candle. So as soon as we light the candle at time zero, the height is at 10. For the horizontal intercept, 
it's a point at which the height is zero. So theoretically, this is a point where the candle would be completely burnt. So it takes 45 minutes for the candle to completely burn out. And what are the domain and range of this function? So this is a review of the last lesson. Well, uh, our domain is talking about the x-axis here. So if we look at this line, we definitely have endpoints here. So here, our line is between time 0 and time 45. So, uh, for the domain here, we're going to say that uh, time in minutes, so we're going to call time t, time t is greater or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 45. So that means that time can be anywhere between 0 and 45, inclusive of 0 and 45. So this is going to be the domain right here. Uh, for the range, here we have, we're, for the range we're talking about the height, because this is the dependent variable, and the height ranges from 10 to 0. So height we're going to represent with h, and it's going from 0 to 10, just like that.